Hi, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much again for your, you know, for your lecture. You've mentioned earlier about Shoal Solution. Um, what is it? What's Shoal Solution? I think I'm not, I did not mention the Shoal Solution, but I, if we're going to give bicarbonate, uh, uh, the bicarbonate, it's uh, a combination of the bicarbonate in a, in a D5 containing fluid. Uh, but I did not mention the Shoal Solution. I am not giving those uh, medication. I, I, I'm very sorry. Okay, sir. There are questions regarding the use of sodium bicarbonate. How do you give sodium bicarbonate drip? And related to that, do you give a sodium bicarbonate bolus? So for the sodium bicarbonate drip, as I have mentioned, it is given through... I usually give the sodium bolus first if there is severe acidosis and there is a life-threatening condition like hypotension, arrhythmia, and I usually compute it at, at uh, compute the sodium bicarb drip, ah, so, sorry, the bicarbonate deficit and just give 50% of the deficit. Then for the drip, I usually give it in a D5 containing fluid and uh, it will depend on the clinical status and I usually give it for 24 hours. Uh, but again, uh, alkaline therapy, I've shown that there is, in terms of mortality and morbidity in patients with lactic acidosis and ketoacidosis, it doesn't affect uh, uh, prognosis of the patient. So the treatment for those is to treat the etiology. Thank you, sir. Another question regarding sodium bicarbonate. Do you give sodium bicarbonate to all arrested patients? Oh, actually, in the in the advanced in the ACLS treatment, it is part of the regimen already. So, in some patients who have who who are ongoing with CPR arrest, you can give sodium bicarb. Thank you, sir. Another question: If arterial blood gas is not available or is taking so long. Would you recommend giving sodium bicarbonate push, say, around 50 mex IV to those with quote-unquote acidotic bleeding? You know, I heard that uh, story before in some provinces where there is no ABG and they, are go, they go on clinical. Fortunately for me, I'm practicing in an urban area. Uh, but that will depend on the how confident the attending doctor would be eh? Probably if I see patients who are in cosmos breathing and with still on respiratory uh, support already, he is in ventilator, but the RR is still uh, more than 30 and there is no urine output, probably I could give sodium bicarb because patient that patient might be on the acidotic side. But be careful in acidosis, as I have mentioned, it inhibits respiratory centers also. Um, related to that clinical scenario, in case um, a physician or a nurse or well, um, any healthcare worker is unable to extract blood from the arterial, um, from the artery, can you extract blood from the vein and you uh, send it for blood gas analysis as an alternative for an ABG? If you're just going to look for the bicarb, uh, there is little difference between the venous and the, the arterial. But the purpose also of the acid base, the ABG gas is also for the levels of oxygenation. So that will be a different story if, in terms of, uh, of oxygenation. For the venous, we're just going to look at the bicarb. If it's very low, uh, you can give initial treatment and look for the arterial blood gas. But I think it, it will be very... Uh, collection of blood from the arteries are are easier collected than the, uh, than the venous. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Marcia. Our next few questions will be directed to Dr. Hernandez. Um, I think you've mentioned this in your lecture, but um, can you give activated charcoal to any, to any uh, toxicated patients? And how, uh, how long can you give it? So to answer, you don't give it to all patients. There are only a certain number of patients that you can use activated charcoal. There's actually an acronym that um, it's not usually um, discussed or a mnemonic. It's false, pero PH yung ano niya. Uh, so you don't give it for 
some of the acidic solutions or acidic chemicals for those who are already in um, respiratory support. So, pati yung clinical condition are included. And timing is also a consideration. So, if the medication has a very fast transit time that you're unable to catch it early at the same time, uh, so that's within one to four hours. And at the same time, for the medication that you're using, it doesn't have any enterohepatic circulation involvement. You don't use activated charcoal. Can you use egg whites? And are we still using um, syrup of um, Ipecac? Syrup of Ipecac in present evidence is still part of some of the guidelines for pediatric but it hasn't it uh, it's slowly being removed from the adult recommendations because of the higher incidence of co-ingestions for adults so if you force emesis there might be co-ingestants that might uh, worsen erosion if you force the emesis i'd like to open this question to both dr hernandez and dr marcia um, good afternoon. Can you give a little bit of insights in diagnostic management on labanog poisoning? I think for Aaron, I would leave it with uh, um, how to manage the poison and toxicologic management. And for Dr. Marsha, about expected blood gas abnormalities in labanog poisoning. Thank you. And so thank you. It's a very interesting uh, question because there was, there was actually a labanog poisoning incident last two years ago here. I mean, Nagune. So it's in the Laguna area. So it's actually from residual methanol. So generally, so it's a toxic alcohol which um, which causes um, high um, osmolal gaps and it causes acidosis. So uh, one of the recommendations for management actually, if you go by antidote, Actually, the antidote of methanol is ethanol. It should it sounds weird, but it's a competitive inhibitor. The uh, it, it's competition so that you try to unbind methanol from from its receptors. But otherwise, I think if I am correct, the one of the cases that was managed before was um, managed by hemodialysis. If I am if I remember correctly. Thank you, Aaron. Doctor Marcia. And that's a difficult question, no. Uh, I, I think it's more of the toxicology, but it, it's correct that uh, because of the acid-based disorder, this patient might, might have or will have a an high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So if, uh, if, there is, if the acidosis is not that severe, uh, probably we can alkalinize the urine, we can give bicarb solution, and hydrate this patient for the for the acidosis part, but if it's a life threatening disorder, this patient will need uh, ventilator support. There is hypotension, there is arrhythmia because of the acidosis. We can do dialysis for a short term basis, uh, not a permanent dialysis, just to remove the 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 anion or the what's causing the acidosis. And after correcting the acidosis. Uh, I think that's the complication of the of the alcohol intoxication or the lambanog intoxication ng naman, the acidosis. So that's it. Thank you very much, Dr. Marcia and Dr. Hernandez. Unfortunately, we do not have enough time to answer the questions of all of our participants. Again, we would like to thank Dr. Hernandez and Dr. Marcia for sharing your knowledge and insights in today's webinar. I know that all of us, the hosts particip and participants, have learned a lot this afternoon. Thank you very much. Advance Merry Christmas to all of you and stay safe.